I'm not much of a gardener, but last Saturday I was doing a little bit of gardening and I noticed all the damage that the slugs had done to my plants and flowers. And then I checked a way that I could get rid of slugs. But on one website it says this, don't get rid of the slugs. They're a tasty treat for hedgehogs and I've decided, well, I better look after these slugs. And so I'm letting them eat up all the compost in the compost heap instead. This year I was pestered too with ants and I wondered about a way to get rid of ants. And then I, I realised that actually ants were just trying to protect their colony. They were just trying to store up goods now for the winter season that was coming. Interestingly, the wisest man in the Bible, a man called Solomon, he talked about the ants and he says this to us. Go to the ant and consider her ways. Go to the ant and consider her ways. You see, the ant is an amazing creature. It makes preparation for the future. Even in those cold winter nights, the ant has had its preparation made for the winter nights. And so I wonder about us. Could we consider a little ant who very wisely makes preparation for the future? And I wonder if you have yet considered your ways. The book of Je Deuteronomy talks about that. It says we have to consider our latter end. Our lives will not last forever. Our lives fly past so quickly that we can hardly imagine it. And yet at the end of life, the Bible tells us there is a judgment. One day all men and women will stand before God and the books will be opened, says the Bible, and the Lamb's book will be opened and God will look down the books to see if your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And the Bible says these shocking words, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. An ant makes preparation for the future. And I wonder if you would consider the ant and consider your latter end. It's a very important thing. But the Bible also says another consider. It says this, consider your ways. It's found in the book of Haggai, right at the end of the Old Testament. And the nation of Israel had gone so far away from God. And now God speaks to them and says, consider your ways. In our country of Scotland, I don't think there are many people who are considering their ways. They're living for pleasure, they're living for self. They're living as if God didn't ever exist and they are just living a careless, thoughtless life. And the Bible tells us that the wicked will be cast into the lake of fire. I know this is a very serious thought, but we need to consider our ways. We think about the Bible and it tells us that we've sinned in God's sight. The Bible tells us we've got iniquities in our hearts. The Bible tells us it's transgression. We've transgressed against God. And God wants us to turn from our sins and he wants us to turn to his wonderful son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that Christ actually died for our sins. And because the Lord Jesus Christ died for our sins, sinners can consider him and be forgiven from their sins. Consider the ant that makes preparation for the future. Consider your latter end. One day we will stand before God. Consider your ways. Your ways, you see, will come into the judgment and the wrath of God, except you repent. But in the book of the Hebrews, it's my favourite of all, consider. It just simply says this. Consider him. It's referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. I guess we could consider his walk and we could consider his ways and we consider his words and we could consider his wonderful miracles. But that wasn't what the writer of the Hebrews says. Consider him who endured such great contradiction of sinners against himself. One day the Lord Jesus, God's own son, came into this world and men stood before him and they hated him without a cause. They whipped his back. They plucked the hair from his cheeks. They buffeted him. They pierced his hands and his feet. They even pierced his side at the end of the time that it was upon the cross. They put him up upon a cross. And on that cross, the Lord Jesus Christ was suffering there for sinners. And I just thank God that we're encouraged in the book of Hebrews to consider him. What a wonderful person it is to consider. The Lord Jesus considered us. His words on the cross, I've often talked about them, they're famous words, and he says this, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And the Lord Jesus Christ simply calls sinful people to himself that they might repent and receive his forgiveness. And when Christ died upon that cross, he didn't die for his own sins because he had none. He died for our sins that we could be forgiven. Consider the ant as a little creature, but it makes preparation for the future. Consider your latter end. Our lives will be gone in just a moment and we need to be prepared for 
the judgment of God that we might have our sins forgiven, that we might have peace with God, that Christ might be our saviour. Consider your ways. Your ways are taking you far from God. You need to repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and consider him, the one who is the saviour of sinners, that you might consider him today and have peace with God, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, eternal life and hope for the future. What a wonderful thing it is to consider him today. May God bless you as you consider these simple thoughts today.